Thank you for clicking on Science Year 9 Options. I'm Mr Medway. I'm the Head of Science and Computer Science here at Charter Academy. So what's really important is to know that everybody in Year 10 does study science. That always covers all the three science subjects, biology, chemistry and physics. But there is a choice to make in terms of what pathway you would like to study as you go into Year 10. So the choices are between combined science and separate science. If you choose separate science, it enables you to study the same topics in a bit more depth. So there are extra lessons for some of the topics that we study in Key Stage 4, which let you explore more complex elements of the same information. We also have one additional topic that I'll talk about shortly. The difference in outcomes between these is that the combined science pathway combines together all three of your results at the end of year 11, so that's for biology, chemistry and physics, into two GCSE grades. So for example, you would get two grades like 4-4 or 4-5 or 5-5 or even all the way up to 9-9. The separate sciences course results in you getting three separate GCSEs. So you would have certificates for biology, chemistry and physics, which are not dependent on each other. So you could get a grade 9 in biology, a grade 9 in chemistry, and a grade 5 in physics, or grade 5s in all three. In years 10 and 11, we build upon the foundations that we've laid in terms of knowledge and skills throughout Key Stage 3. So there's some examples on the screen in front of you as to the things that we are adding to the knowledge that we already have. We do also reflect on knowledge that's already been gained in Key Stage 3 and make sure that those skills that we've already started to learn can be embedded and recalled really effectively throughout Key Stage 4. One place to make a note here is that if you choose to study separate sciences as part of your physics course, you would also study space science, whereas that is not included on the combined science course. When you're thinking about which science pathway you're going to choose, it's worth bearing in mind the things that make good scientists. So people who end up being very successful scientists, and there's a picture of a few examples up in the top corner, they're people who look for links between things that happen in the real world, things they can experience, and the things that we learn in the classroom. They ask a lot of questions. They're curious about how the world around them works what they can see, what they can hear and feel, what's going on inside their bodies, what's going on in other organisms, why things in the sky look the way they do, or why people build things out of certain materials. It's always that wonder about, well, why? That is fundamentally what science really is, asking the question why and then trying to come up with an answer and then prove it. Good scientists spend a lot of time thinking about science. They might read things, watch TV, films or YouTube about current modern science or even science fiction, things that we might think about in science in the future. All scientists have to be patient and be perseverant, have to keep trying because with science, sometimes things don't go the way you expect. You have to repeat experiments over and over again to, to make sure your results are true. You need to repeat learning that you've already done to make sure that it's really embedded in your long-term memory. You have to be creative. You've got to imagine new solutions to old problems because we have to remember as scientists that what we currently do isn't necessarily the best way to do something. There could be a better solution that no one's come up with yet or the answers we have to questions aren't necessarily the best answers there might be a better answer out there. So that also means that scientists have to be open-minded. You have to be prepared for your mind to be changed. You might think something's true, and then you do some science, or you learn some more things, or someone else does some science, and they can teach you that actually there's some better explanation for something. You will have your own beliefs and opinions challenged by your teachers and by each other, so that you can grow your understanding and appreciation of the way that people see the world around them. And the last one, which is always a bit of a joke in my classrooms, is that good scientists 
always bring a calculator. So I've already touched on this a little bit in terms of what makes a good scientist, but it's also important to think about why we actually teach science at GCSE level and, beyond, and before and beyond. And the reason is ultimately that science helps us to understand what is going on in the world around us. There's loads and loads of things that happen in the natural world and the human-made world that we cannot understand unless we learn the science behind them. And it's really nice to be able to look at something or hear something or see something and have an explanation in your mind as to why that thing is happening. We feel that it's really important as well that in modern society, we get a lot of information thrown at us and that making good decisions about who or what to listen to, who or what to believe is really, really important. So we spend a lot of time practicing making decisions and analyzing data so that we can make sure that students who leave us are going to be making informed choices and recognize how they can make our whole world a better place. As part of making the whole world a better place, one of the things is continuing to study science beyond GCSE. So, being successful at both GCSE and beyond in science subjects is a really, really powerful way to open doorways to the future. There are lots of A-levels and other similar equivalent courses that you can study after GCSE and lots of opportunities to gain experience through apprenticeship programmes in STEM subjects. And those always open interesting doorways to the future not just in science, technology, engineering and maths, because science is very well thought of by all universities in terms of what you would be choosing to study. If they can see that you've done really well at chemistry in GCSE and A level, then they would think, well, I know that this person's going to be good at analysing things and they're going to be able to make good scientifically backed decisions, even though they're applying for a job in something that's not related directly to science. There are some examples on the screen in front of you and you can do some research to find out a million other opportunities and jobs. But what's really useful for us as science teachers is knowing what you might be thinking of doing in the future. So if you do have any plans, it's best to let your teachers know as soon as possible and speak to Miss Richards, our career advisor, because then we can start putting together a plan that makes sure that we're giving you the best opportunities as soon as we can. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me talking and reading about our science curriculum. There is more information available elsewhere on the website and we look forward to welcoming you into whichever pathway you choose for the beginning of year 10. Goodbye for now.